the first game up of the four is in Los Angeles. Very interesting that it is a four o'clock start time. Like, you better start trying to get to the arena now at the Crypto.com Arena, the former Staples Center in downtown L.A. for Arizona Clemson. Again, this one coming up just after 7 Eastern time tonight in the West Bracket. Arizona, the two seed, is favored by 7.5. Total is 152 in this one. Let's begin the discussion, Kyle, with you. Thoughts on Arizona and Clemson tonight? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to start out by saying Tommy Lloyd's now 1-5 and five against the spread in the NCAA tournament with the one cover coming last week by half a point. Uh, it's the first time I've been back since that game, TJ. Dayton should have covered the spread in that one for myself and Jeff, but uh, let's keep moving on instead of diving into that one too deep. Uh, let's not kid ourselves. So Arizona playing in L.A., definitely a home court advantage. I mean, there's uh, definitely not neutral floor here. Clemson is a long ways away from home. There's going to be a lot of Arizona fans. Definitely strange, TJ, to see this be the early tip. And then you got Illinois and Iowa State as the really late game in Boston. So uh, interesting how they set that up. I kind of understand why they did it, but it still looks uh, strange. Arizona wants to run. Clemson not very good in transition defense. Bottom 50, uh, bottom 55 in the country in transition defense. They didn't have too many teams run against them. I think Arizona is going to in this one. The thing about Arizona that bothers me is, you know, Caleb Love is going to shoot a ton of shots no matter what. And is he going to be hot? Is he going to be cold? Um, he's taking a ton of threes. He's 34%, a lot of contested jumpers. Um, Larson, Johnson, Ballo, all much more efficient on offense, but they don't get near as many uh, possessions where they're in control. I think this is still a weakness for Arizona in the long term because if Love's missing, he's still taking a lot of shots, and uh, you know that could hurt their efficiency quite a bit. I didn't expect Clemson to be here. Um, I, they've done a really good job. P.J. Hall, a great player. Hunter's playing very well. Um, Arizona is 285th in the country in post-up defense, according to shot quality. Surprisingly low. I mean, because if you look at Balo, he's a really big guy. But Balo is not quick at all. He's not an elite shot blocker. Uh, Clemson's spacing on offense is really excellent. I think that could kind of bother Arizona at times. I lean Clemson plus the points here. But my bet here in this one is Arizona. I think Boswell is going to get used less. I mean, you saw how last game he played against Dayton. He wasn't doing anything. Uh, Bradley played what much more. Jaden Bradley has been getting a lot more usage lately, um, taking minutes away from Boswell. Bradley's good in transition. He's good in the pick and roll offense, which they like to run a lot. Clemson's not great at defending it. I'm going to take Bradley over seven and a half points. Guys, he scored eight points or more in seven straight games. I think he makes it eight in a row here. All right, interesting, a player prop, and Jeff, I'm smiling because we talked a lot about player props on the show, and I know you're going to have a player prop play later on here today. All right, thoughts on this one? I have to confess, I don't run from this, from the live button. You saw my record there at the beginning. I'm out on Clemson because I went against them in my bracket with New Mexico. I went against them on this show in a live play with Baylor. They burned me both times, so I'm out on knocking them or going against them. I'm curious what your thoughts are, big man, on Arizona Clemson in game one in L.A. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest one of the biggest surprises of this entire tournament has been how good they played, particularly defensively. They played two really good teams with great guards, and they checked the boxes in both games. Uh, you're going to get another group of guards here that are very good. I think the key for Clemson, obviously, getting P.J. Hall out on the perimeter. As he alluded to, Umar Bello is not a strong defender. Uh, he is maybe in the front court, but not on the perimeter, throw in the fact that Clemson could throw a couple of bigs at you. It's not just P.J. Hall. They have Wiggins, they have Shefflin, they have Jack Clark, who's given them something off the bench recently. I've been really impressed by Gerard and Hunter as well. I made this number five, personally. Um, I just think it's a bit high. And it all comes down a lot of the time for Arizona to, does, if Caleb Love plays well, they play well. You look their There last, you go. You look at their last two losses over the last month, he had six points and two points. Uh, both losses, as I said. So it really comes down a lot to him. Um, I think they could surely win this game, but I think seven and a half is a bit high, at least to me. Remember also, P.J. Hall has not really done that much. He's only had 11 and 14 points in this tournament. And he's a guy that's generally up towards 20, even eclipsing 20 over three of the last four before this tournament. So yeah, to me, I'll lean on Clemson. Throw in one other thing. When I back an underdog, I've talked about this. Do they turn the ball over? Clemson, no. Do they make threes? Clemson, yes. Are they good from the foul line? Jack, uh, or not Jack, uh, 
Joe Girard, 90, mm-hmm. what, 4%? We've talked about that. 95%. That's great to have in games like this. It keeps the games close. Um, I like Clemson as well. Again, uh, P.J. Hall in foul trouble, to your point, Jeff, at the end of the Baylor game, and Baylor bricked all the free throws. Game didn't get into overtime where it mattered. He fouled out in the final 30 seconds of the game trying to get a loose ball. Uh, Clemson has got something cooking here. They're in the Sweet 16 for only the second time in the last 25 years. Is it going to be a short visit? What kind of crowd is there in the first half of the game? Quick comment, guys. I mean, again, it's a 4 o'clock local time start. How much of the arena can get in there? you got to believe it's mostly Arizona fans for the early game. But the atmosphere, it may be a little different uh, than what it will obviously be in the second half of the game. And as the North Carolina-Alabama tip time is getting closer, the arena will obviously be full. What do I know, Kyle? Any quick thought on that and how it might affect things in the first half of the game that it's not as loud and raucous as it may be in the second half? Oh, I think those kind of setups probably uh, lean to an under, kind of more of a sloppy start. I'm not anxious to bet unders with Arizona, but um, Staples, Crypto.com games are 19 unders and 10 overs overall in college basketball. So um, I would lean first half under. All right. Again, this is a spot in the Elite Eight up for grabs. If you're wondering, Clemson's never been in the Final Four. Arizona's not been there since 2001. Whoever wins is one step away from being in Arizona. And man, if Arizona can get to Glendale Phoenix, what a situation that's going to be for the Final Four games. But they got to take two more steps, a big one tonight coming up. And again, for Kyle Hunter, he's on a player prop here for Jaden Bradley to get over seven and a half points in this game. As Kyle said, he's been on a roll with scoring at least eight or more as of late. So that's a player prop tonight for Kyle in game number one that we are discussing. 